I have to introduce myself once again because I'm playing now another role. I'm Yuri Glickman. I'm a researcher at Fraunhofer Focus in Berlin. So Fraunhofer, maybe you heard about it. It's the biggest uh, European organization for applied research, uh, which consists of 68 institutes around Germany and the world. And um, I belong to Digital Public Services Department, where I lead a group on open service engineering. Uh, traditionally, we are producing a lot of open source code, and we are doing many solutions for public sector, and not only for public sector. And uh, one of our key topics at the moment is open data, where we, we are quite active in Europe, and not only in Germany. And today I will present you briefly two projects which we are developing, which are not a part of OW2 yet, but potentially can become a part of OW2 code base, because both of them are open source. And uh, of course you probably seen a lot of such slides like this one about benefits of open source. There are different aspects. Open source is still a topic important topic in Europe, and not only in Europe, and also in other countries. And there are social, economic, and uh, also uh, performance uh, benefits in uh, using open data. From one side, open data helps uh, public administrations to become more transparent to the citizens, and, but it also builds uh, or provides a certain base for innovative development, so, so developers can develop and create innovative applications, and uh, I believe many of you are already using kind of transport applications, so local information applications, and which are very useful, and which exist thanks to innovative developers, and of course also to companies or public administrations providing with raw data. And from on our side, also public administrations can benefit themselves from, from such data because they can improve their processes and can use also this data in their work, which is still a challenge for them. And um, it sounds maybe simple, but in reality, where public administrations are organized in such a way that it's very difficult for them to, to establish process of publishing open data. Uh, because we need to decide uh, what kind of data we have, who ha has to select the license, who needs to give go, and so on. So it's a, it's, it's a very difficult process. And the European Commission takes a lot of actions in helping uh, Euro, the countries in Europe to, to publish more data, establish such processes. And one of these initiatives is the European data, European data portal, which is now the leading project on open data in Europe, which I represent. And this European data portal has to become the main hub for all public data in Europe. So the portal is online since November last year. And the project is led by Capgemini Consulting. And my organization, Fraunhofer, is responsible for managing the data. So for, we are collecting data, processing them, and uh, providing all met data management functionalities in the portal. When I, I speak about data, in reality, what we are doing, we are working with metadata, because data stay in the original portals where we are published. We don't want to duplicate data but we are collecting metadata, which is also not a trivial process because of interoperability issues, multilinguality issues, and all possible issues <laughs> which you can imagine in public administrations. So what we do? So at the moment, we actually harvest data. We use the word harvest. So we harvest metadata from all big European data portals. At the moment, uh, this European data portal is the biggest open data portal worldwide. So we have over 600,000 data sets, which metadata we provide in 15 languages. And uh, this is for now, but later we will increase it up to 24, so to cover all European Union languages. So we already harvested uh, data from 34 countries from over 70 catalogs. So you can imagine uh, well, there are a lot of different portals in, in Europe, and uh, they provide, not all of them provide any API. In some cases, they provide REST API. Sometimes it's a Sparkle endpoint. Sometimes you can download the whole catalog as a single file. Sometimes they provide RSS feed. 
So kind of uh, IT guys around Europe are very innovative in the way how we provide access to their data. And uh, our mission is to collect all this data and uh, bring them to a certain recommended metadata standard, which is DCAT application profile for structuring metadata in European public portals. And we are one of the first uh, big portals which is actually implementing this profile. Actually, we are the first one. But apart from this work, technical work and developing and maintaining this portal, we are also supporting data publishers and data users. So we are showcasing, we are training, we are providing training materials. So we are doing a lot of work. So the technical work is about 50% of all project. All our 50% is about helping data publishers to prepare data, to organize their processes, to train them, to help them, and also to help communities to, to find the data, to find new possibilities regarding data reuse. So, for example, we published a good book for data providers where we are explaining what open data is, how to build own open data strategy, how to implement it, how to organize this life cycle of publishing data, which is not a trivial thing in public administrations, and how to monitor the success of all these operations. So we are doing it. We have a very good online course prepared by Open Data Institute, from UK, which is a partner in the consortium. And we collected a good library of information materials. So I recommend you, if you're interested in the topic, to have a look and reuse. All these materials are under open license, so you're very welcome to reuse them. And regarding the portal itself, so as I said already, we are harvesting more than from 17 open data portals. We are supporting this new uh, and implementing this new specification, which is decade application profile. Translation is also a challenge. We are using machine translation service of European Commission. We are one of the test users of this new service. For sure, you know Google Translate. Uh, but it's, it's something similar, used, implemented and provided by European Commission, but only for European Commission uh, public services. And we are one of the projects which has the privilege to use this service. So we are using it. And uh, the base of our repository is Seeken from Open Knowledge Foundation. Maybe you know it. And we are providing also a set of tools to support uh, portal owners. For example, we have Open Data Licensing Assistant, uh, helping them to understand Open Data Licenses, similar to Open Source World with Open Data. Also, there are a lot of licenses. Not all of them are compatible with each other. And uh, it's very similar to open source. It's not so easy to choose a license. And here, especially, it's a political decision, which is usually taken by a certain public administration. To, uh, they decide under which license they want to publish their data. And sometimes we are even reinventing licenses or defining new licenses, which is, of course, as we know from open source, not a good idea. But it's sometimes politicians, they have, let's say, own arguments why they do it. And it happens. And uh, also what we are doing, we are providing us a tool to, to check the quality of metadata, which we are collecting from the portals. So the portals owners, like in Germany or France or in Spain, they could uh, have a look what kind of mistakes we found in their metadata. Very so typical like broken links, or some information is missing, some portals don't provide any description for their data, or some others will provide only description but no data. <laughs> so it's, uh, what are all possible combinations of uh, problems. Yeah? But in general, such portals were like search machines. They help people to find data. And you find data, you download file, and what you find inside, you know only after you open it. In our case, we also provide some visualization, like some, uh, some charts, so you can visualize some types of the data, but of course not all types of data. But uh, they built, a, let's say, a basis for more user-oriented applications. And uh, it could be kind of app or portal. And one of such applications which is relying on this uh, European data portal it's a policy compass, so 
policy compass is a research project. So European Data Portal is not a research project. It's a project implementing a tender, or, or, or it's a commercial project under a tender of European Commission, implementing a Connected Europe Facility Program. And Policy Compass is a research project. And the idea of this project is what by using open data and having information about uh, performance of, of different aspects in, in different aspects of life, people could judge about the efficiency of policies, of political policies. So there are a lot of information about unemployment, about criminality, about different aspects of life, which are published in, uh, in uh, statistical agencies like Eurostat, for example, or some others. And the idea is to combine it with, with certain uh, tools, allow people to define own metrics of performance, and look on this data from critical point of view and try to understand what actually happened in the past. Was a certain policy a success or not, and so on. And uh, in Policy Compass, we operate with these six main types of contact, content. So first of all, users we can upload own data sets. In our case, it's, uh, Policy Compass works only with time series data, so with statistics for a different period of time, like uh, unemployment, for example. And uh, so users can visualize this data and uh, can bring in visualizations different types of data in one uh, chart. And uh, they can also annotate them by events, by historical events, like challenge, uh, policy changing events. When a government introduces a certain law, we can show it in the same uh, uh, graphical chart, and uh, users will see what happened after some time after introduction of this law, if something changed or not, and, uh, and can compare with other countries, and so this is the idea. And uh, users can define own metrics as mathematical formulas, combine several different data sets in one metric, and uh, also chart it, basically. And uh, with theories to which users come, they can define as causal models, explaining what are the relations between different concepts, like between unemployment and criminality, or between unemployment and drug consume, consume and so on. And of course, we can discuss. So this platform is good for online data journalists, where you can prepare your stories and export them to online articles. We are also implementing this functionality, so you, by clicking, you can export it directly to a certain online platform, like Facebook or to, to some others. But uh, if I look a bit more in detail, when very difficult step is about uploading data sets, because all these public agencies, they publish data in extremely different formats. Even if it's a comma-separated value file, it can be formatted in a such a different way, <laughs> but it's impossible to import it automatically. You, you, you need to look inside and understand semantical meaning, otherwise it does not work. So we implemented a very user-friendly wizard, which helps users to upload uh, these data sets and, uh, and build them. And we are supporting uh, the, the most popular formats at the moment. And, uh, Interesting feature is what we can search from Policy Compass directly in two main sources for such data, so in European Data Portal and in Eurostat, and find the data sets, and also import metadata directly from the portals, which is difficult. And now one part is uh, about events. So there is no such a big, for open data there are many projects, but there is no such a registry for events. You cannot find somewhere a registry where there would be information about what kind of policies changed, when, where, or when was a certain crisis, and so on. So it's difficult. So at the moment, we are using Wikipedia and DBpedia as a source. So we are analyzing also text in Wikipedia, and we are able to extract events from Wikipedia articles. Because in Wikipedia, you still have quite many events, but where they are not in structured information, they are just in text. So we have a special text processing tool to extract such events, and we are building such registries, so we have integrated registry. Uh, 
And we can visualize data, as I said, to bring different, basically, data in one chart. We, have, we support different types of charts. And in these charts, you can easily see certain trends. You can see what after, for example, as soon as the export of, of, uh, of weapons to, to Middle East increased some time ago, two years later, always people run out of the region. So it is clearly seen three times. We have such an example. Three times in past history, we could see it. But approximately two years after the time when countries start buying weapons in a certain region, people start to leave, leave in the region. So it's, it's kind of clear message. Of course, it's not a, a proof. It just helps people to understand data and also find something new and build this theory and discuss. So this platform, it doesn't provide any proof because we don't have enough data. The statistical data which we get, you get like one number per year or maybe per month, which is not enough for, for, to, to, to claim uh, any real correlation. But it gives you idea and uh, helps you to understand things, so at least build a theory. And we have interesting metrics manager where users can define metrics themselves and can calculate um, new data sets based on these metrics. So you can define your own index of happiness, calculate it for, your, for yourself, and compare where people happy in one country or another. So this is idea. Yeah. And uh, all these theories and how different things in what are related to each other can be summarized as a causal models. So in such a type of graphs. Uh, and we can do certain prediction because we can calculate where, where, where weights based on historical data and we can predict how a system will in, evolve if certain values will be changed. Like if you, in your system you are changing unemployment by decreasing it, how it will influence other aspects of life. Yeah? And in such model it can give you certain qualitative prediction in which directions our concepts will go. And finally, two important components we have with deliberation. We are using adhocracy software, which is also open source software. And we are, we are outcomes of these discussions and uh, deliberation we formalize as a argumentation maps or graphs with help of Carniadi software, which is also another open source software which we are developing. So it's to, to define arguments in, a, in, a, in the form of formal argumentation. So I welcome you very much to visit both platforms. The addresses are European Data Portal point U and the now one policy compass point U and both are open source and both provide very good APIs, REST APIs. So if you're interested to develop kind of app relying on such type of data, you are very welcome to use it. Thank you.